Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Let's take a look at what's trending in these digital streets. Justice for Jelani Day is trending after the release of a new report over the weekend. The Chicago Sun-Times say Day's body was found without organs. During a private op autopsy, Day's body reportedly had no eyeballs or teeth, and his jawbone was sawed out. His brain and spleen were also missing. Day was reported missing in August. His body found September 4th in the Illinois River. However, his body wasn't identified until September 23rd. Many on social media drawing comparison in the cases of Day and Kendrick Johnson. In 2013, the body of 17-year-old Johnson was found rolled up in a gym mat at Loudness High School in Valdosta, Georgia. After a preliminary autopsy, medical examiners said Johnson died after accidentally suffocating inside a gym mat. But a second autopsy showed blunt force trauma. It wasn't until the second autopsy that it was revealed that Johnson was buried the second time without his brain, heart, lungs, liver, and other organs. His family believes Johnson was murdered and local law enforcement helped cover it up. This is why we don't trust police. This is why we don't trust law enforcement. This is why we don't believe autopsies. People say, we're well, just giving the benefit of the doubt. There is no doubt that these systems are corrupt. There is no doubt that these systems don't tell the truth. A boy was found wrapped up in gym mats and they told us it was an accidental suffocation. All your life, who do you know accidentally suffocates themselves inside of a gym mat at that age? It was absurd on its face, but law enforcement continued to prosecute a lie. They continued to advance a story that wasn't true. The, all, the, the medical examiner's office did the same thing, uh, it appears. So this is why we don't trust. This is why we need outside examiners. This is why police cannot be trusted to police themselves. They're never going to yield truth and justice that way. We need oversight. We need a new way. We need a new system, but we're going to keep you posted on Jelani Day because this cannot go without justice. Rapper Lil Nas X said that other rappers do not want him or don't want to work with him because of his sexuality. The artist recently sat down for a talk with Double XL magazine and opened up about the hardships he faces as a gay man in the music industry. The rapper came out as gay in 2019 and since then has become one of the most outspoken artists when it comes to his sexuality. While talking about coming out, he said... Quote, I honestly felt like it was kind of my duty. This comes right as people observe today's annual awareness of National Coming Out Day. First of all, Lil Nas X just put out an amazing album. I just want to put that on the table. That album is a amazing pop album. Should be the album of the year in that genre. He's a very gifted artist. And the idea that rappers don't want to work with him because he's gay is ridiculous. It's all about hyper-masculine posturing. First of all, hip-hop wouldn't exist without gay folk. Hip-hop wouldn't exist without gay set designers, gay stylists, gay makeup artists, gay choreographers, and guess what? Gay rappers. Your favorite Favorite rapper just might be gay. That's not an allegation. I'm not casting aspersions because there's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with your favorite rapper being gay. But the reality is hip hop has always operated with this almost don't ask, don't tell code that pretends that it's not filled with gay, lesbian, queer, uh, and, and, and other types of gender nonconforming uh, people. We don't want to tell the truth about it because hip hop is built on this unhealthy, hyper toxic, even masculinity. But we got to be honest. We got to tell the truth about that. I'm going to move on to another story before I go. Let's talk about Netflix. Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos has defended Dave Chappelle's special. If y'all didn't see it, it's called The Closer. And he stated that it won't be removed from the streaming service. This comes as Netflix aims to clear out things after three employees were suspended, including a trans woman who tweeted against the special after they crashed a meeting with top executives. Chappelle has been getting backlash for comments he made about the trans community during his latest stand-up show. Outside of Sarandos, the family of the late trans comedian Daphne Dorman also came to Chappelle's defense. Dorman was a friend of Chappelle's and a focus point for some of the jokes in the special. Look. I like Dave Chappelle. I happen to believe that he is a comedic genius. I also think this special just wasn't funny. Politics aside, just wasn't that funny. I think he raised some interesting points about the contradictions between how LGBT communities are treated versus how black folk are treated. I think he's talked about some really interesting tensions and political issues that need to be resolved when it comes to uh, how uh, even uh, certain white trans communities treat black trans folk. I mean, we can talk about all these issues. But it has to come in the spirit of love and community and dignity and safety. And what Dave Chappelle produced was a special that was transphobic, that was trans antagonistic. 
and he played to the cheap seats. It was punching down. And I know he says that you can't say it's punching down, but just because he said it ain't punching down don't mean it wasn't punching down. It was punching down. It was largely unfunny and it was deeply harmful. And when trans folk are telling you, hey, this is harmful to me, it doesn't just hurt my feelings, right, to his point. This actually puts people in legitimate physical danger. This puts people in, in harm's way. This makes it more likely that a person is going to die when black trans women are already vulnerable, when trans people across the board are already vulnerable to various forms of unsafety from police, from everyday people, from, from gun violence to domestic violence. We got to be honest about this. So y'all got to smoke for three employees who complain about Dave Chappelle, but you ain't got no smoke for Dave Chappelle. I'm not saying cancel them. I'm not saying take them off Netflix, but I'm saying you can't on the one hand be protecting his free speech that's harmful and firing or disciplining those folk. That can't happen. Anyway, we got much more to talk about. We got all week to talk about it.